Now, let's look at uh, the mechanism of uh, understanding the QQ plot, otherwise called as quantile quantile plot, which is nothing but a very important tool if I have to fit a distribution for a particular data. Right? Probably I have a data. I want to know, I want to really see whether it fits a normal distribution or whether it would fit a log normal distribution or some other distribution. Now, how do I know which distribution is more and more appropriate for the data? Of course, there are many uh, mathematical uh, mechanisms, <clears throat> many uh, calculative uh, statistical tests which talk about uh, the fitment of the data to a particular distribution, right? Uh, but at the same time, a QQ plot gives a kind of a visual representation of the fitment of the data to a particular distribution. Now, let's see how we'll understand that. Let's say I have uh, a data, right? The profit loss the company has generated uh, on a daily basis or the, the profit or loss with respect to the sensex on a daily basis this data has been collected over a period of one year all right now i really want to know whether this profit or loss follows a normal distribution or not i really want to check and i want to see how the qq plot operates in this context one way Probably if I have to uh, really uh, go with a direct checking of let's say the profit or loss or the arithmetic returns or the geometric return, whether they follow a normal distribution or not, I can very well use uh, the skewness and the kurtosis. I see whether these values are very close to zero. Here when I say kurtosis, I mean excess kurtosis. I see whether they are very close to zero and in that case I may say that the distribution is fairly normal. Right, so probably just to uh, do a few calculations, if I am looking at uh, the mean of this profit or loss, this is this much. Whereas when it comes to uh, the arithmetic return and the geometric return, probably uh, it is, uh, yeah, the arithmetic return, the mean is around 0.11% and even for the geometric return, that's the same case. Okay, and I want to also look at uh, the standard deviation of in uh, all the three cases. So here it's around 195. Extending it, I see that the standard deviations are also more or less same, whether I have computed the arithmetic return or the geometric return. Similarly, when I take the skewness, just to check out the normality, in this case, the skewness is 0 0.02, very close to being a 0. Even in the other two cases also, they are pretty much closer to zeros. And at the same time, if I am looking at excess kurtosis, I can talk about uh, the kurtosis being 0.48, okay, not too much away from zeros in all the cases. So, on a broader perspective, I may talk about all these three being very much close to normal. But at the same time, what I would also look at is a visual representation. And that is what comes with the QQ plot for me. What I do in a QQ plot is, I try to plot the quantiles. One about the empirical distribution. For this particular distribution, I will look out for the quantiles again some specified so i'll check out for the quantiles one specific to the data two specific to the distribution how do i look out first thing i'll do for the data so empirical data if i want to empirical uh, quantiles if i really want to find out the best way is take the rank i take the rank of this particular entry as a part of the whole in an ascending order right the rank is coming out probably it's better that i take it in a number form so the rank is around 21 and what i simply try doing is this 21 
uh, I mean, it's like uh, the 21st smallest value. 200 and minus 252 is the 21st smallest value. Here, I did not bring in any normal distribution or anything. It's just the empirical data, which is giving me that this is the 21st, 21st smallest value. Then what is that I am saying? Okay, this 21st smallest value. So I express it as a proportion of total. So which means I will divide this 21 by the count of this entire list. How many divided by total? So which means it corresponds to the lowest 8.6% of the data. Right? Probably I can say... This belongs to the 8.64th quantile. This data, because there are 8.64 percentage of the values which are lesser than this. So, this corresponds to 8.64th quantile. If I am not assuming any kind of a distribution. But if I am assuming it as a normal distribution... What should be the proportion of this? This is what I compute from a normal distribution. If it is a normal distribution, right? If it is a normal distribution, the area of this particular value, when the mean is around 26.17 and the standard deviation is around 195 and we are looking at it on a cumulative basis, I say that this uh, should correspond to 7.75 percentile of the observations being below this. If it is following a normal distribution, only 7.75 percentage of the elements should be below this two, minus 252.15. But I am seeing that approximately 8.64% of the values are below this. Now, this is what I can traditionally get into the plotting aspect. Right? Uh, what I can simply do is, I copy these two things. Right? I copy these two things. And I can sort them in the form of proportions. I can sort them in uh, the proportions and I take a plot of these two, which means uh, there is one which should correspond to 0.004% or probably if I am taking it in uh, percentage form, see the first value should be the 0.41 percentile, but I mean it is actually 0.41 percentile. Whereas when I am looking at it as a normal, the first one should correspond to 0.2 percentile of the data. So this is where I am doing the plotting between these two, which will actually come out as something like this. Right? Wherein on the x-axis, now this is what I can think of. The actual normal quantile I can plot on the x-axis. Now instead of this, let me do for a scatter plot. If I am doing for a scatter plot, I can uh, look out for or even a line chart uh, should be fine. Okay, if I am doing something like this, all at on the x-axis, I will take uh, the axis values. I will take the axis values to be these itself. Right? Or uh, it's better to go with a scatter plot to understand it much more better. Rather than this particular chart, I can even think of a scatter plot wherein I am trying to take, I am trying to take on the y-axis on this, I am calling it as a QQ plot. On the x-axis, I will take the normal queues and on the y-axis I'll take I'll take uh, the distrib I mean uh, I'll take uh, the original so from here I could see that there is a kind of a curve that is coming up slightly the more and more it 
fits uh, a straight line, I can see that it is uh, more and more closely fitting to that distribution. Now, this is what we call as a QQ plot. If the QQ plot is more or less linear, I can say that the specified distribution, in this case, the normal distribution fits my data very well. But the more and more this plot is uh, departing, is deviating from linearity, I can very well say that my data is having either thinner or fatter tails with respect to the normal distribution or whatever the distribution I have used for the reference purpose. So there are various other things that we can derive, the intercept and the slope of the linear QQ plot. It gives a rough idea of the location and the scale parameters of the data. And if the empirical distribution is having very heavy tails corresponding to the reference, which means probably for a reference purpose, I can have a linear graph also plotted out. On the same, I can have a straight line also being plotted out. If at all, I am seeing uh, heavier tails, which means deviating much, much uh, higher or lower corresponding to the reference, then we are talking of steeper slope at the tails, otherwise more and more similar uh, slope uh, corresponding to the reference distribution. So it is very, very important uh, distribution for us to identify the outlier. This is a very important mechanism which helps us Probably if I had seen a few values somewhere here, a few values somewhere here. So let me uh, just modifying the data a little bit to make things uh, easier for you to understand. Let's say the first one, I make it as 30,000 just for the sake. I have made it as 30,000. All the data got uh, changed. Now you look at your QQ plot. In this case, okay, okay, we have actually, uh, we have to take the new values, right? Uh, let me uh, take uh, the new values or uh, if that's the case, I think we should uh, rely on the QQ plot without even doing the transformation. What I learned without even doing the sorting, I can think of using the QQ plot wherein on the x-axis, I'll take this data directly. I'll take this data on the x-axis and uh, I'll take, without doing the sorting, I'll take this data on the y-axis. Now you see your QQ plot, what change has come out. You could see in the new QQ plot, it is coming very much, it's nowhere close to a straight line. And you see that probably up to here there is some kind of a, a more or less a fine, but this is looking wide variant. So this is what I typically uh, try to understand as the outliers in my data. Probably if I go back, replacing the value, right, if I go back, replacing the value, I could see that the QQ plot is coming more and more closer to normal itself. Right, I could see that the QQ plot here comes out to more and more closer to normal itself. So this is what can very well be uh, understood from the QQ plots. The more and more outliers can quite comfortably be uh, understood, which really helps us see to what extent the data fits the a particular distribution because the more and more it fits a particular distribution I can think of using the properties of that distribution to explain the data quite comfortably all right so we will uh, use this uh, this fitment of the data to a particular uh, distribution probably we can try out two three distributions for this data and whichever distribution looks very close to normal we can very well use it uh, as the appropriate distribution for this data and we can progress further in terms of the next set of calculations. All right. So that's the reason uh, anywhere I have to understand uh, the, the pattern of the data or uh, the distribution, statistical distribution of the data 
the visual way of doing that is through the use of QQ plots. All right.